Friday morning room. I think I may finally have the Ninja 8 puzzle solved. Here is our friendly U.S. government disclaimer reminding us that trading is risky and you should never trade with money you cannot afford to lose. Ta-da! I've got the DTS and Raptor loaded. Let me give you a quick overview of what you're looking at. Uh, here in the top left, for those of you new in the trading room, is the DTS Raptor. That's Diversified Trading System. Sorry, I said Raptor. Hawk. This is the Hawk Microalper. Top right is the Falcon Swing Trader. Bottom left is the Eagle Trend Trader. And the bottom right, many of you will recognize, is your Raptor. Took me a little while. Um, seems to be a really big deal with Ninja 8 is how many days you load. The more days you load, it will tend to take an eternity to load it up. So try to keep uh, the number of days that you have loading to a minimum and it will boot faster. All right, I did some cosmetic changes, as you can see. I removed the background highlights and just a really quick overview how to do that. Just like before, none of that has really changed, but where you're going to find it has changed. You go to your indicator panel and you find your tool, in this case, the Falcon. And what you want to do is you want to find the background opacity. Uh, yours will probably have a value other than zero. Uh, if you turn it to zero, you will make it totally transparent. 10 makes it totally opaque. And I changed my arrow colors a little bit just to make them stand out. Seems every year my eyes <laughs> getting a little bit weaker. I, all those things your folks told you about, it's all true. Uh, I've also got the trade calculator going on here. So that's here in the top left. The nice thing about the trade calculator is you can move it wherever you like it to be. And currently for my initial trading, I will run it with the ATR stops. I can always adjust my stops as they go. And Maybe, just maybe, uh, we'll get through the session here without something going wrong. Um, Mark asks, how many days do you recommend? Well, like I say, the minimum uh, that the software will allow. So, for instance, here with the Raptor and the Falcon, because I'm running the ultimate support and resistance suite, I need at least 10 days of data to make that software work. Um, so whatever, um, I think I've knocked down my hawk here to 10 days as well. But like I said, whatever the, the minimum it is to make your, your software, all your programs work, that's what you want to use. Okay, here we go with our daily chart. And you can see we are still in a bit of a uptrend right here. We've broken through our trend line after a 
couple of days of some serious back and forth. And now we have this little trend line to deal with. Somewhere, what's going to happen here is, oh, let me change this line color while I'm here. Because I've got too many. Too many blues going on with the with the Raptor. Okay, I think I did that right. Uh, somewhere through here, the market is going to try to react. Don't know if it's going to be today or uh, next week, but there will be a reaction through here. This will be very important. Once that reaction occurs, the market will, the buyers will have to pick it up. And once we get the, the buyers picking up the market, then there's a very good chance we will see a run here back to 7,000. I think that's where a lot of traders are looking. If this pullback continues a little bit deeper, however, well, then we may be in a trading range scenario where the market for the next little while will just continue to go back and forth. Oh, it looks like I got to change that too. Sorry, folks, just give me a moment here. It's still a little dark, isn't it? Let's see what this does there. That's a little, maybe we'll knock it down just a little bit more. There, that's a little better. Okay, so if the market pulls back fairly deep, say back here to 62, 6300, uh, there's a very good chance the market will then be in bit of a sideways trade mode which it could continue this way easily until the spring where we will see either a, a bullish or bearish break uh, drawing tools Sorry, I've got to do one more thing. <laughs> Where is the horizontal lines? Make that a little bigger. Glad nothing's going on with the market right now.
Ah, there we go. That's the grid line I want to get rid of right there. There, that's better. Okay. Put that away. All right, so here we go to start the day. Where was our first in-sync signal? Ooh, up here. Here is a rare occurrence. We have an in-sync signal that did not follow through. This would have been your first signal of the day. if It came right on the opening buzzer, so if you missed that, you may have tried to take advantage of this one. Um, but honestly, you probably would have placed your stops somewhere halfways for this run up. <clears throat> the best stop placement would be way down here, but that's not doable. Regardless, it looks like it's one of those odd occasions where the first in-sync signal right there, not working out. Uh, okay, here we go. Scott uh, giving us a little bit of feedback on Ninja 8. He says the load times are long, but after that, the CPU and memory it uses is very low. So there's a uptick for trying to work with Ninja 8. I don't know if, um, and this is just my personal opinion, I'm not picking on Ninja 8, you know, it's it's the new platform, but I'm not sure if all this, all these gray on grays and black on black was a good idea. You have to be so careful where you're grabbing because the, the headers, you know, relative to the other headers and relative to the charts, Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to grab and you find yourself overshooting. Oh, I guess you can't with this. Oh, there it goes. It shows you the header <laughs> if you try to go away from it. But I found it a little bit difficult, you know, to read. And again, it's probably just my eyes. I do have an eye appointment with the doctor in a, next week. But, um, yeah, it's fine if you're... 25, not 55, <laughs> but a minor, minor point. The cosmetics, very nice. You know, it, the charts really pop. All righty. Oh, one other little, uh, little cosmetic upgrade that I did. You probably noticed that I don't have a bunch of printing up here. I increased my font size, as you can see, which also increased all my uh, indicators that we're running here. If you find that's taking up a little bit too much room on your chart, if you're struggling for chart real estate, what you can do is when you go to your indicator panel, there's this box here marked label where it will have the name of the indicator. Well, you don't need that label for the indicator to work. So you can just delete the name and it will tidy up your chart a little bit.
we were watching some reruns of the the show Monk with the OCD detective and um yeah <laughs> I think there's probably a little bit of monk in everybody but <laughs> some of it was a little bit uncomfortable I think the only other thing I may do here is I may change my while we're waiting on the market and to help me avoid doing something silly in opening range I'm going to change my trend line here on the Falcon Oh, what did they do with fuchsia? Hmm, did they change the name to hot pink? We're getting a little bit of a pullback now, back toward the hard edge. Uh oh. Pressing my luck. Mark, I'm starting to wonder if uh, there was something you didn't do. <laughs> Mark says, I was an optician in the Army and made myself some good computer glasses before I retired. <laughs> I always say, as long as I can see and move a mouse, I'll be in business. Eyes are important for this business, that's for sure. You are correct. All right, we'll go with that for now. Almost out of opening range. I don't have to worry about doing anything too silly. Um, market recovering a little bit here. Now we're in the hard edge. We got a green bar sell. There should probably be some follow through from that. Uh, we do have a second push opportunity if you wanted to try to take advantage of it. And all we're looking to do here is to short on a move below that low. So the signal actually occurring up here, but we could look to short down here. What time is it? It's almost, we're almost outside opening range. There we go. Okay, where's my order? Oh, don't tell me. Okay. 
Okay, there's my exit order. Where's my entry order? All right, hold on a second here, folks. I got one more thing I need to do. This I forgot to take the time to, to do. And we're going to take some time and we're going to go over the uh, trade calculator in the future. Oh, wow. <laughs> Mark, you're like, uh, you're a machine. Mark says, I finished the military with six specialties. It was a great ride and an awesome learning experience, to say the least. I'm loving life now, though, with no more distractions. Yes, I bet your days have changed a bit. do here is turn on my chart trader. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but for today, we're going to do that. Okay. Well, we had a little bit of a move lower here off of this uh, hard edge bounce. Nice little move down. We're still currently, it seems, in a bit of a downtrend. Sorry while I get the last of the wrinkles ironed out here.
Okay, looks like we're going to slip just a little bit lower here. Okay, I'm experimenting on another chart here to see how this is working. And I think that's what the problem was, is my uh, chart trader was not turned on. Because you need to have access to this part. Always a learning curve. Nice thing is once you have it set up, you don't need to worry about it again. It's just that initial, initial bit of setting everything up. All right, a little bit of a pushback, maybe. If we make a little bit of a bottom here, if we get a little bit of a test of the extreme, it is going to open up the market to a number two signal. That will be the reversal signal here on the Raptor. And there it is now, the number two signal. So we could look to buy once the market gets back above this high. This can be now our uh, second push on the signal. All right, there we go. Initial stops should be down here, somewhere near the lows. I'm using the, the ATR as a stop, so I could roll it along with the ATR if I chose. And again, this is a counter trend signal. It's gonna be inherently a little bit more risky And once again, the problem with the counter trend trade is you block yourself from taking your with trend trade. Oh, get up there. No, they're going to take me out stinkers. Last chance for the buyers, but I don't think they've got what it takes here today. Yeah, that's what I thought. A little bit too soon to get cute with the counter trend.
we do have you know a, a downtrend this morning so we'll always do better staying with the trend I can shoot a couple trend lines here just for reference oops Oh, well, look at that. We almost we seem to have a bit of a trend channel going on here this morning as well. If we overshoot this channel, it will make the market much more bullish. But even so, right now, it looks like we're getting a bit of a bullish pushback. As is often the case with counter trend attempts, you will find yourself getting in just a little bit too early. which is annoying to say the least. And we've got a little bit of a sideways drift going on. But I halfway expect uh, the buyers to push back. After all, the market was very strong earlier in the week. All right, we'll try to hold out here for a better signal. Well, the ego working a little bit of a rule of three signal here. The hawk trying to get bullish. As is the falcon, but we're still a little conflicted. Yeah, maybe. Scott says price wants to get back to the gold median line where we are pretty close right now. So much of the morning once price got below primary resistance we spent most of our time in that little zone. All 
Um, okay, Frank says, uh, good morning. I did not get the yellow trading tabs on my chart after installing. Also, I did not see the software in the members area for download. Okay, this is the the trade calculator. As you can see, we're uh, still having issues with the trade manager. The trade calculator is the new version. Well, an alternate version, shall we say. It does pretty much all the things that the trade manager used to do. The only thing it does not do is it will not auto trail your stops. And uh, our entries, it's, uh, we're gonna look at pre-positioning entries in the future, but right now the trade calculator if you are interested in that, Frank, send me an email and I will send you the particulars. For trade manager owners, we did have a, an extreme discount on the purchase of the trade calculator. We are still working on a trade manager solution for Ninja 8. I have no timeline for it. It's been a year and it was time we had to do something in relation to money management software for Ninja 8. And the trade calculator is indicator based. So what that means is it will never hang up on Ninja Trader 8, which is the problem we're having with the trade manager which is a strategy-based program. Ninja has indicators and it has strategies. And apparently the strategies are much more complicated and much more sensitive. And it's just leading to all kinds of problems. And I'm sorry, I don't have any kind of ETA for a trade manager. But like I said, we offered an extreme discount to the existing trade manager owners if they would like to add trade ca uh, calculator to their assortment. Uh, yeah, it could be. Mark says um, U.S. consumer sentiment just released down almost 7% from forecast and 8.3% off last month's number. Probably responsible for that little flurry of bars. Yeah, it could be. You see, the thing with the news is the news always fits what the market will do. Um, the markets definitely can be news driven. You, you got your FOMC reports, you got your non-farm payroll reports. Uh, in crude oil, you have your inventories. In natural gas, you have your inventories. Uh, in the grains, you have your uh, WASDE reports, your World Agricultural Supply Demand Export. So it's... Um, The, there are certain reports that will drive the market, but generally speaking, what reporters will do is they will try to find a reason for the market doing something. If prices go higher, well, there had to be a reason for it. Let's find out what that reason was. If prices go lower, there had to be a reason for that. Let's go find out what that reason was. <laughs> yeah, Scott, Trump tweets, absolutely. My goodness, the, uh, the market definitely Twitter-driven. Who to thunk that? All right, a little bit of a bullish flurry now, and... 
uh, we're, if the market continues higher from here, well, it looks like the Falcon already producing uh, a trend change signal. We definitely have a rule of three developing here in the Eagle, and we're going to get an early or perhaps a proper number one signal if the uh, Raptor continues to rally higher. <laughs> yeah, like Frank says, uh, at the end of the day, if the market goes up, they, the reporters go into the good box for answers and the bad box if it goes down. That's not too far from the truth. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're getting here a couple of comments, but before I, I get into any of those, we've got a late filter entry here in the Falcon. We've got a number one signal here in the Raptor. So let's get ready for that. I'm going to look to buy. I'll do a second push off of this high, or if I get uh, this bar moving lower. There we go. All right. So we'll try buying into that one. And stops. I will roll my stops down here below the ATR. Ideally, I should be two swings back. The notion is I don't want to get tagged just because the market comes a tick or two below that swing point. <laughs> Mark says, I wonder which box is bigger. That's easy. The bad news box. There's no downside to forecasting bad news. That's why I pay very little attention to what economists say. Because economists always forecast bad news. Uh, there's no downside. If they're wrong and things turn out well, nobody cares. Eh, so what? So he was wrong. If they're right, well, then they beat the drum and they say, oh, look how smart I am. No, there's never a downside to forecasting bad news. Yeah, I like Scott's suggestion here. If anyone makes a Trump indicator, I'm buying it. <laughs> you know what, Scott? We may uh, <laughs> we may try to do that. <laughs> That's a great idea. I'm going to run that past Ben. <laughs> hey, Ben, can we make a Trump indicator? Wow. Just no follow through here today again. You know, we got the breakout. There should have been a little bit more bullish follow through, at least to get to our target. It's not like I'm asking a lot here. Come on, keep pushing. There you go, you can do it.
Well, providing the market doesn't make a really violent pullback here, something that goes ultra deep. Now that we've crested this high here, we should see a little bit of follow through. There we go. Where's the next resistance line? Oh, there's primary resistance again. Wow. There we go. Ooh, look at him go now. I guess I could have extended my profit target somewhat. Wowie. Okay, somebody check Twitter. What has President Trump texted now? That was quite the move. Yes, awesome late filter entry is right, Mark. So we had the late filter entry and the number one signal producing at the same time. Uh, we did the number one on the Raptor, but late filter entry signal uh, did print at the same time. Big rally up. Now we're getting a little bit of a pushback here back to the primary resistance zone. But whatever that was, it got a lot of buyers into the market. Hey, way to go, Mark. Mark says, took that one to the bank. Mark says, I can't believe the amount of financial advice I received daily since becoming a trader. Oh, yeah. And what happened to the soft edge of my cloud here? I did something. Okay, I'm not going to mess around with that right now. I will do that after the room today. Well, I'm glad I was able to take advantage of that at least a little bit. A solid move. All the ducks in the row. You just knew there had to be some sort of bullish follow through because of the, again, the daily chart, right? We are in an uptrend short term. So until we kind of breach this uptrend line, uh, we can remain bullish. And like I said, even when the market does eventually break, stop it. I, uh, when it does eventually break, we will see somewhere through here, the buyers will have to get more aggressive. And that will be do or die for the buyers. That This is the situation that I'm waiting for. Because then we will know if the buyers, we're going to look for an opportunity to buy. We're going to look for an opportunity to sell. If the buyers continue the trend, great. We know the market's probably going to head higher. If the buyers can't continue the trend, however, if they get back up here, kind of make a double top of sorts, then there's a very good chance the market will head lower. So that's what I'm on the lookout for. And what I'm anticipating over the coming 
days and weeks. But that was a very solid move up, no question. <laughs> Scott, you're too funny. I gotta. <laughs> I'm well. I'm afraid to get you your own microphone. <laughs> Scott says in regards to the uh, Trump indicator, it would be <laughs> huge. <laughs> hmm, very clever. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a good a good observation here from Mark. He says, the market has been coiling and springing over the last couple of days. I've been very selective and patient with my trading, adjusting to the way things have been moving. And that's true. We have seen a lot of, um, you know, the sideways congestion and then the breakout. Look at this, more sideways congestion. All right. While we are in sideways congestion mode, I got to figure out what I did here to my eagle. Oh. Oh, dear. What happened to my eagle? <laughs> then I broke it again. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, that's emails alert. Okay, those are audio alerts. Sorry, maybe I didn't do anything. Band coloring, here we go. And edge, okay. Oh dear, I did something to it. All right, won't worry about it right now. Uh, the Scott fan club is chiming in here. <laughs> I think it might be dangerous to uh, <laughs> give Scott the chance to speak. <laughs> we won't get any trading done. Okay, a definite sideways drift. Lots of yellow bars here in the in the hawk. We're just gonna be testing and retesting. It looks like this little bit of a trading zone that we have. So this now the trading zone and as before, we're going to look for a breakout. That's still a little dark, isn't it? Oh, I got my cloud back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look for the, the breakout, the retest, and then we'll have an, a better idea where the market's going to go. 
What we want to see after the breakout and this retest is we'll have the opportunity to throw in a, uh, a sell order or conversely a buy order if it occurs up here. <laughs> yes uh no i i know scott says we're just having fun but um i don't mind mark's suggestion here uh, having a guest speaker on fridays would make fridays more more fun he says i'd even wear a weird tie it's uh that's a good suggestion actually i like that suggestion All right, I'm going to be very selective about any trade that I take so long as the market is sideways here. <laughs> Scott recommending Mark to be the first guest speaker. Okay, let's see whether the buyers rally now off of these recent lows at 67.60. Oh, there they go. Okay, Mark's game. All right, we may have to look into this. Well, we're just kind of all over the map here. Back now to the top end. Let's see what we get in the way of a breakout. There's definitely some bullishness coming back. Okay, we've got the first micro macro cross warning dot here on the hawk. So the hawk looking a little bit more bullish. Um, a little bit of a reactionary bar here would be nice. At least one. I'm going to be too late. Stinkers are going to run away here.
Okay. Wasn't much of a breakout, but it was a breakout all the same. I'm going to throw my just in case buy order above there. This is now just in case the market does continue in the direction of the breakout. You can see the comparable orders. It would be a second push on the first micro macro cross. Uh, we're waiting on a trend change signal here in the Falcon. And we're working on a number one signal here in the Raptor. So if everything comes back into sync on the Raptor, uh, we'll get our number one signal. You can see how a lot of the signals coincide. All right, here we go. All right, so we're filled. We also produced a uh, the buy signal here on the eagle at the same time. Let me throw my stop in. Oop. Wrong order. You got to remember which order you're using here. There we go. Oh, come on now. Got to see the market tick 67.76. That would give the trade a little bit of wiggle room. Oh, come on, you guys and girls. Where was that earlier momentum we saw? If the measured move idea holds... We could have a very, very big target here. So the whole idea behind a measured move is that the market will tend to repeat the move that brought it into the sideways trading range. Not always, but if you're looking for a guide, it's not a bad way to go. Uh, let's see where it falls relative to the support and resistance suite. Oh, just a little bit past the secondary resistance line. Well, we're trying to make some traction here. There we go. So we're going to challenge these highs. And after that, we're heading to the highs of the day, the highs of the morning.
we're at 67.86 half. I'm going to try to run this one out a little bit, but I won't give it too much room. On the next set of bullish bars, I'm going to start to roll my stops in. Ugh. We may find ourselves inside a larger sideways trading range. That is a possibility. where we're sitting more like this. Okay, if I can see a couple of bull bars. I'll start to bring my stops up. struggling here. Okay, there's my one bull bar. the second one. All right. I'm going to roll my stops now rather aggressively, bring them toward the hard edge. The buyers have to get it together here. Show my chart trader here in case I need to close out my position and just hit my close button. They're thinking about it. Here we go. Big push. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to get my trade up here to break even.
Whoa, there's a hop. That occurred when we took out the highs here. We caught a lot of uh, sellers, trapped them, got them out of their positions. Oh, are they going to let me? No. Oh, that's all right. Okay, so now we had the breakout. Now we're seeing the retest. We could put another just-in-case order up here to buy. Uh, Scott says, weird, I don't see your chart trader. Um, I, I opened up the chart trader here on the on the Falcon, the other chart trader I have in hidden mode. Now we're flinching a little bit as we get closer to the secondary resistance line. Throw my uh, stop loss order in there. And here on the Falcon, you can see it's a, a trend line touch signal. Um, actually, the, the Hawk did give us a macro pullback signal. We could have gotten in early with the Hawk. Just a regular follow up signal here on the Raptor. And I think I'm going to bring my stops in a little bit now. Come on, get up there. This is typically where we would hit our break even at around four points. All right, I'll take the trade to break even. It's getting a little bit late in the morning here. Mark says he's long from the late filter entry signal. I'm trying to hide behind the um, resistance line here, the secondary resistance. Hopefully it will be enough. Help, <laughs> get up there. The momentum does, doesn't seem to be quite as strong as it was on this last move higher. Maybe we can sneak a couple of points out of this. Nope, got, got me a break even. Oh well, that's okay. Yeah, way to go, Mark. Mark says, bag three nice trades. I'm done for the day. That's how you do it. We may see a larger 
retest of this breakout. This is not unusual either. You know, if you see the market break out from a trading range, very often you get the initial little retest, but sometimes you'll get the bigger retest. And this can sometimes take an hour to develop, but it will develop. The market will try to come back and retest now there is an opportunity here if you want to play that retest if you want to anticipate that retest you could consider a short to get the market back down here around the 67 80 ish zone there's something to consider But a fairly active market for Friday. We've seen some decent moves here. The trading band isn't overly broad, but if we get a retest of the high and a failure, I might consider a short, a short term short back down around 67, 82, 83, which would kind of put us back toward the first hard edge of the trading band. If they give me that opportunity, they may not even give me that opportunity. All right, well, there they go. We're getting the we're getting the retest. And look at that little bounce back. Beautiful. Came in sync with the number three signal. In fact, I may try to buy that. Now, just looking here for a, a little short-term move, stops go below the hard edge. So the number three signal bouncing off the hard edge, which coincided with the top end of the trading range. The danger with this is that it may turn out to be a test of the extreme. So. If I can get another bullish bar here, I'm going to be relatively quick about rolling my stops up. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to start to roll my stops below anything with a wick or with a tail to it. So I got this bar right here. Tiny, tiny little tail. I will take the trade to break even now. 
Oh, don't you dare. They just kissed the profit target. Get up there. Guys, come on, play nice. Oh, they tagged it again. It's a limit order, so it has to actually trade one tick past. It has to trade 67.95 quarter for my order to fill. Hitting 67.95 is not enough now i could do a i could have done a market if touched order and then my t order there we go Whew. <laughs> that, that was close i was starting to wonder whether or not they were going to give it to me it depends where you are in the in the queue as well but look at that that was just textbook a textbook breakout retest, it actually occurred a little bit sooner. The way the market was languishing, I thought, oh, my gosh, it's going to be like an hour before we get that retest. But we did. We got the retest to the breakout and a very nice little follow through from that. So something else to keep a lookout for when, uh, when you're watching the market. All right, gang. Oh, how are we here? Yeah, we're close enough. They, they're going to be closing in on the lunch hour soon, and things are going to tend to move a little bit more sideways. If you are going to continue trading today, uh, the market is definitely bullish. I think you can look for pullbacks and other opportunities to buy. Uh, I don't know if they're going to settle on the high. They may settle a little bit more mid-range, which markets tend to do on Fridays as well. All right, uh, Monday is a holiday. The markets are closed on Monday, so I will see you on Tuesday. We'll talk to you then. Bye for now.